Growing up, I was a perfectionist. Everything had to be done right and to the highest of standards. It seemed as if I was programmed to only accept the best of myself. And I suppose, in a way, it kind of was. I mean, I was my parents' first child, my grandparents' first grandchild. Basically, I was the first kid into the family. So once my younger brothers and then my younger cousins came along, I was kind of unofficially dubbed the leader of the pack. I was the one to do things first, to set the example, and I felt that I couldn't fail. I couldn't mess up or else I would lead them down the wrong path. So in school I got straight A's, I excelled in sports and in theater, I was well behaved as well as a kid could, and I set the bar. But as time passed, I found myself straying away from things that I felt I couldn't be the best at. In high school it only got worse to where I felt that I was wearing a mask, because I was trying to be perfect, but I was just so insecure in my abilities. This was one of the main reasons I didn't audition for American Idol right away. I mean, I had all the support and the tools for success, but none of the confidence. But when graduation came around, I was faced with the same question that most graduates face with. What am I going to do with my life? And well, American Idol was right there. So after discussing with my mom and a lot of, a lot of pep talk from her, since I didn't really want to do it, she went ahead and booked a hotel at the nearest location. And in August of 2013, we were on our way to Omaha, Nebraska, and I was going to audition. Now, I had butterflies the whole six hour drive down there, and it didn't make it any better with the wait in line because, don't get me wrong, it was so fun being around all these people who had the same passion as me and who wanted to pursue music as a career, but with all the singing and going around, it was hard for me to pick an audition song because I hadn't chosen one yet. And I started comparing myself to everyone. I heard this song that I had chosen, but someone was singing it better, or this song which I knew I could do, but once again, someone was singing it. And I didn't know how I could be better. But I decided, you know, I was there already six hours from home. I'm just going to give it a shot. So I went into that arena, and I sang for that panel of producers. By the way, I should probably explain. I didn't see the judges that day. There's actually three rounds of judging before you actually get to see the celebrity judges. There's the cattle call where everyone lines up outside of the arena, and then you, once you get inside, you sing for a panel of producers. Then there's the mock round where they set up a room to look how they show on TV, but you sing for another panel of producers. Then finally, you get to the televised celebrity judge round where you sing for Harry Connick Jr., Jennifer Lopez, and Keith Urban, at least for my season. So I made it past the first round, and then when the second round came around, <laughs> I was at home. Yeah, it was a plot twist. I wasn't expecting it either, but they said that my song choice was boring and that they wanted something more upbeat, and I was racking my brains and trying to figure out how, what I could have... One second. The California area code? Hello? Yes? This is Andrina Brogdon. What? The producers made a mistake? They want me to come back and audition for the celebrity judges? Well, thanks. It was just a mistake, of course. <laughs> so there I was, back in the, in the game, going to see the celebrity judges. I, was all, I got all my songs ready, and I was ready to answer any questions that the judges might ask me. Okay, let's be real, I really wasn't that prepared. I mean, this is a big deal. And I was very nervous. But I, racked, I got as much confidence as I could, as I could fake, and I walked into that audition room and I sang my first audition song, which was Nightingale by Demi Lovato. They weren't impressed. So I tried again. I sang Halo by Beyonce, which won me the West Fargo High School talent show so I figured, you know, if I won there, I could maybe won the, win the judges over. They weren't as impressed as I thought they should be, but they handed, me, <laughs> they handed me my golden ticket, and I was going to Hollywood. My auto ride had truly began. Now, I didn't really know what to expect in Hollywood other than a lot of singing and very little sleep, because it was a boot camp week, and a lot of people were going home no matter what reason. So I didn't get my hopes up too high, because I didn't want the fall to hurt so bad if they sent me home again. 
Surprisingly enough, though, to me, I made it past the week. And I was now a member of the top 30, going to be on national TV. Now, at this time, I was getting a little bit of airtime. And I got a taste of how my life could be if I made it all the way. It was then that I realized how badly I wanted the title of the next American Idol. Dually, I realized how badly it would hurt if I didn't make it. This put me back in my insecurity zone. I didn't really connect with any of the contestants because of this as well. And I started closing myself off. I wasn't shining how I knew that I could shine. I wasn't singing how I knew that I could sing. Even when I was in front of the celebrity judges during our dress rehearsal, I wasn't focused on impressing them. I was, wasn't focused on singing or the music. I just wanted to make it past that next step to show that I could do it, to show that I could be the first, someone from Fargo actually making it big. But with all my worrying and my stressing, my biggest fear actually happened, and my name wasn't called. I didn't get to sing on national TV. I didn't get to sing for America. I didn't get to sing for my town or for my family. I got voted off. I had failed on the biggest scale imaginable, national live TV. And I, I went home with a mixture of feelings. I was happy to be back in a place that I knew and, and I knew that people loved me, but I was just so disappointed in myself because I knew that I could do better. In those moments, looking into the camera after my name wasn't called, and then flying back to Fargo, I didn't think that singing was for me. I thought that, you know, obviously I was good enough to make it that far, but maybe not good enough to make a career out of it. Thankfully, I had a gig set up with Fargo Star before I changed career paths. Now, Fargo Star, which is basically like a mini local American Idol, where contestants uh, submit videos online, they get voted for, and then they perform live. I was to be a guest performer. So I got dressed up, I was rehearsed, but I wasn't focused on outshining anybody because I wasn't performing for votes. I was just performing as me. And then something happened when I stepped onto that stage. I heard the crowd cheering for Andrina Brogdon, and it felt good. It felt really good, because here I was, singing without American Idol, singing as just me, and people wanted to hear me. They didn't care if I was an non-American idol. They wanted to hear me. After that, I realized I didn't really want to quit. I mean, just because Idol sent me home, just because I had failed, didn't mean that I was done for. I then became grateful for Idol because it showed me success in the form of failure. It showed me that I didn't need this experience to make it big in the music industry. I needed it to fail and to show myself that I could get back up and I could sing again. And I learned a lot about myself, that it was OK to not be the best, to not be perfect. I didn't have to be this, this image of perfection that always got everything right that I thought that I needed to be. And once I accepted that of myself, I found that I have now opportunities that I could have only dreamed of. I've been on national TV. I've had interviews. I've been in the paper. I got a music scholarship for school. And now I have a job with a group called CBO where I actually get to sing for a living. I found that no matter how many times I failed, or I thought I failed, that that all happened for a reason, and that it actually might turn out to something that's not so bad after all. Let's look at, at some examples, like Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, or even the Beatles. They all were dropped from record labels before coming, becoming major music chart toppers and household music names. Or even Michael Jordan, who was rejected from his basketball, high school basketball team, but is now one of the most successful and famous NBA players to date. None of them quit just because someone said no, so why should I? Like them, I'm going to continue on with my craft, with my dream, singing and performing, as long as I find joy in it. 
Now, I'm still a perfectionist, and I'm working on it. I mean, it's okay to want to be the best, but I've learned that sometimes it's all right not to be perfect. And for once, I'm glad that I wasn't the best. Thank you.